Welcome to Maker Hanger. My name is Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be looking at flight controller boards. We'll see what they do, what the different kinds out there are, and we'll also wire up and program the tricopter and get it ready to fly. So let's get started. <laughs> Flight controller boards take the signals coming from your transmitter and convert them into motor speeds, which will then move your multicopter. For example, if you increase the throttle, then all the motors will come on at the same time. Or if you want to pitch forward, then the back motor will speed up and the front two motors will slow down to tip the craft in that direction. While the flight controller board is doing this, it's also taking in information about the aircraft's position and movements with its onboard gyros and accelerometers. With this information, the controller will make very tiny changes to the motor speeds to counter the wind and other forces that are trying to make the multicopter tip over. If there were no gyros, the multicopter would be almost impossible to fly. Trust me, I've tried turning them off once. So as multicopters became more popular, there were more people and companies who were developing flight controller boards. And now there are a ton of them. They all vary in ease of use, programmability, flight characteristics, etc. So here are the four that I like the most. All these boards have gyros and accelerometers, so they all have auto level capability. The OpenPilot CC3D board will give you the best flight experience of all of these boards. It's very easy to set up with its interactive GUI and setup wizard, and if you think you can tune a flight controller board, this is definitely the one you should get. You have full control over the PID settings, and this is where it can get a bit tricky. Tuning the multicopter takes time, and it's a lot of going back and forth between your computer and your flight site to program it. But once you've programmed it properly, then the multicopter that it's controlling will fly like it's on rails. Then there's the KK2 board. It's sold through Hobby King, but there's a couple more places that are selling it now. Its biggest selling point is the built-in display, so you can tune it while you fly. If a setting is is not right, then all you have to do is land and use the buttons on the board to navigate through the menu and change what you need. This makes the tuning time drop dramatically, and for this reason, this is a great board for beginners. However, its flight characteristics are somewhat lacking, but updates come out frequently and they always approve upon how the board flies. Next, and the most expensive, is the Archipilot APM 2.6. This board has some additional sensors, like a barometer, compass, and GPS, so it knows the location and orientation of your multicopter. With this information, there's a whole Whole host of flight modes for different situations like altitude hold, loiter, return to launch, and even waypoint navigation for pre programmed missions. With the RG Pilot, your multicopter will pretty much fly itself, making it very attractive for people who have never flown before and have the money to spend. The last board I want to talk about is the Flip 1.5 Multi Wii controller, and this is the one I'm going to show you how to set up today. It's a small and simple board, much like the Open Pilot, but it's less expensive. It gets its name from the original line of Multi Wii controllers that used Wii nunchucks and other Wii accessories to get their inputs for their gyros and accelerometers. Now that these electronic components are more readily available, salvaging Wii parts is no longer necessary, but the name did stick. I'll be showing you how to wire and program this board today and set it up for tricopter use. You can find links to where you can buy the other boards that I talked about and tutorials on how to set them up in the description below. So I'm on readytoflyquads.com and I'm here at the Flip Multi Wii Flight Controller page and I'm going to show you how to order your flight controller board so you get it with all the right settings. So. Coming down here, we have our first option, which is to add a barometer or magnetometer. You can do that if you want to. It's just going to give you a heading hold and some other features, but we don't really need that for what we're doing. Okay, so you're going to want the protective case because it's just very helpful and it's pretty cheap. Uh, you're definitely going to want your tricopter firmware. Definitely get that flashed. And then for the case, you're going to need uh, the three pin right angle attached to the top, or you can just get them separately if you want to solder them on yourself. And then everything else you don't really need. Uh, you could get an extra USB cable if you don't have one already. So anyway, now you can add that to your cart and purchase it. That's how much it costs. But anyway, while you're waiting for that to come in, we can download all the software. So right here, we have the multi Wii controller 2.3 software. You're going to click this link and it's going to bring you to this Dropbox folder. Now in this Dropbox folder, you're going to want to download all the files. So just download the zip up here and then you're going to get this folder. So this is the multi Wii controller uh, folder. Now you're going to want to go through and download all the drivers that are applicable to your system. And there's a couple here and then there's different ones for a Windows computer that I don't install because I'm on a Mac. But anyway, once you've gotten all those, then you're also going to need the Arduino software. So you can get that at arduino.cc and go into the downloads and download the one applicable to your computer. And then if you don't already have it, you're going to want FTDI drivers. And these just help out with a lot of things. So they're very useful. So get the VCP drivers. Now that you have your board, let's install it on your frame. 
I'm using double sided tape here, but you could also use hot glue or bolt the board to the frame. Now let's wire up the receiver and plug in our ESC and servo wires. Also when programming and testing, the motors will spin, so it's very important that you take off the propellers from your tricopter. Okay, now that I've mounted our flight controller board, we can plug in our receiver, which I have right here. This is a Lemon RX receiver. It's just another uh, DSM-2 receiver that you can choose instead of a orange RX or um, an actual Spectrum one. But anyway, I'm just gonna be using this. There's a link in the description where you can find this. One thing that we have to do before we can start plugging in all the wires into the correct spot into our controller board and our receiver is we need to make sure that the motors and the ESCs know where the extents of the throttle are. And the way that we do that is by plugging them into the throttle spot of this receiver one at a time. But first we have to bind this. So this comes with a bind plug. I have it right here. We're gonna plug that into our bind slash battery spot just like we did last year. And then I am going to plug in one of our motors, this is the back motor, it doesn't matter which one to start off with, into our throttle spot to give this power. So I'm gonna grab my transmitter right here, and I'm just using my 9XR for this. You can use an orange uh, T6 or whatever. I have a DSM-2, the orange DSM-2 module in the back. And I'm gonna plug in the battery to start the binding process, and you can see the LED flashing. Now I'm gonna take my transmitter and I'm going to Hold the button in the back, which will put into bind mode, and then turn it on. You can see the light stops flashing. It starts flashing slowly, and then is now bound. Okay, so now we can unplug the bind plug, unplug everything, and we can start the process of making sure that these ESCs are Correct. Leaving my transmitter on and then plugging in the ESC into the throttle spot without the bind plug on, now I'm going to take my controller and put the throttle all the way up and hold it there. And now I'm going to plug in the battery. You're going to hear a tone. This is saying that it knows the top. Now you bring it down to the bottom. Now it knows the bottom. And now it started. So now, it knows the extent of the movement of the motor, or my controller stick. So I'm going to do the same thing for all the motors, and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, now we're going to plug in our ESCs into the controller board. So right here, you can see that there's different names. D11 is going to be the front left motor. So I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to plug it in, signal facing up into D11. Then the other side, which is the right side, is D10. And then our back motor is D9. And our tail servo is D3. I'm going to take the servo arm off the servo before we plug it in, just in case we didn't have it centered properly. Now moving on to our receiver, I'm going to plug in male to male connectors, which I have right here. You can either make these your own or there'll be a link in the description where you can buy them. And I'm going to plug these into all the spots on here with the signal facing up. Okay, now that these are all plugged in, I'm going to plug their corresponding channels into where they're supposed to go on the flight controller board. Now on the cover, they're all labeled and then also on the board they are too, so if you need help there, uh, it's all nicely labeled for you. And for the auxiliaries, auxiliary 1 is where you're going to change your flight mode, and on here, channel 5, which is corresponding to auxiliary 1, is your gear switch, which is only a single throw switch. Now I want this on my flap switch, which has two throws, so I'm going to take my auxiliary 1 on my receiver and put it in auxiliary 1. And put my gear on auxiliary 2, which we can use for other things. Okay, now your receiver's all wired up and we can place this somewhere with some double-sided tape. The Lemon RX receivers come with double-sided tape on the back, so I'm just gonna stick this onto the body. And now your receiver's mounted. Now that we've gotten everything wired up, we can now plug in the battery, wait for the servo to center, and we can now secure our servo arms. You wanna make sure that the servo arm is completely horizontal, and then when you move the motor, that it is also horizontal. And we're gonna take an Allen key and tighten down these. 
Now I'm also gonna cut off the excess so this doesn't get caught on anything. And that's it, your servo is done. Now you can go fly. Well, kind of. The tricopter will arm and the motors will spin, but your tail might not be moving the right way and it's gonna be very difficult to fly. So let's program the board. Leave your battery plugged in and your transmitter on and use a micro USB cable to plug in your tricopter to your computer. Now, I'm gonna use the multi week config software for this demonstration. There's one other one, the WinGUI, but uh, I'm just gonna go into the multi week config Mac OS, open it up. Now that we're in the multi week config program, we're gonna come over to the USB, select that as our COM, and then we're gonna say start. So now we're connected to our multicopter, and you can see as I tilt it, you can see how it's turning and moving around. And you can see how our controls are moving around up here as well. So now I'm gonna arm the multicopter by putting the rudder in the bottom right hand corner. You can see how it says arm. And now I can raise the throttle. And you can see how all the motors are moving. Now we do have to calibrate a few things before we can start. Okay, coming over to the servo tab up here, this is what we need to set up for our servo to work properly. Now we can see our stick moving on the opposite side over here from uh, 1012 to 2000. So that's what we wanna set our max and min to, which I've done right here. And then you also wanna say that the servo is rested in between these so that it'll move both directions equally. And that's why I've set this to 1500. Uh, don't go anywhere else because then it doesn't do anything properly. I just found that out. Okay, anyway, what you're gonna do is now you're going to look at your tricopter as long as you've gone live over here and you can now see how it's gonna move. So when we turn the stick to the left, so I'm going this way, right now my motor is going to the left as well, which means that my front is gonna to go to the right since we're spinning it like this. Okay, so we need to reverse that and just reversing it in the transmitter is not gonna do it. We have to hit this little switch up here and now it switched it. So we should be going the opposite way. Yep, so now I'm when I'm hitting left, it's going right, good. And so that'll bring the nose uh, left. And also if we check the gyro directions, it's countering it. So as the tail goes away, the motor's pointing towards the direction that it's going away from, which means that it's gonna counter it. If it's the other way, then it's just gonna keep spinning and spinning and spinning and faster and faster and faster, and then you won't be able to control it and bad things happen. Okay, now that we have that all set up, we wanna go back and hit save. And that should save all our settings. So we go back to the multi week config, and now we can run up the motors. So I'm gonna arm by putting the rudder stick in the bottom right hand corner, increase the throttle. So now we see that all this works. I'm gonna increase the throttle a tiny bit, and now we're gonna check our gyro directions. When I tip down this motor, it should speed up. And it does, you can hear it. And the same thing for over here. And then if I tip forward, these two should speed up and the back one should slow down. And then if I go in reverse, so we're just trying to see if all the gyros are working in the right way and they're working to help you. If they're going in the opposite direction, then they're just gonna flip the tricopter over and that's not gonna help. So now we're gonna check our motor direction so we can reverse the ESCs. So I got a prop and I'm just gonna rest it on top here. I'm not gonna screw it down just in case. And we're gonna see what direction the motor is spinning in. So you can see we're going opposite of where it's going now. Remember from last year, the text goes up on the top towards the direction where you're gonna be going and we want the propeller to scoop air into it. So I'm gonna reverse these wires. And if you remember from last year as well, all you have to do is switch two of the wires and that reverses the motor. So now we can check this again and we're moving in the correct direction. So I'm gonna do the same thing for all the other motors. Okay, now that our motors are moving in the correct direction and so are our gyros, we can do some more tuning inside the programming. So I'm gonna disarm and I'm gonna set up some of my flight modes. So you can see I'm flipping my flap switch and I have two positions in it. So there's a halfway and then there's uh, all the way low and then halfway and then high. So we have three flight modes that these switches can control. 
and we have our first one, which is arm right here. This is just rate mode. Uh, it's just using the gyros to counter any sudden movements, but it'll just counter sudden movements. It won't level you. And angle and horizon do pretty much the exact same thing. All they do is they just level the craft when you let go of the sticks. So what I'm gonna do is set my low stick setting right here to arm. So when my stick is all the way up, it'll be arm or just rate mode. Then I'm just gonna go progressively down. So if you only have a single throw switch, then it'll go straight to horizon mode, which is pretty much what you're gonna want. So that's how I set this up, and don't forget to write your settings whenever you make a change. Now, if you notice that your tricopter is kind of twitching with the tail servo, that just means that the servo is taking in information faster than it can process it, and we can slow that information down by changing it inside of Arduino. So we're gonna go into the multi-wee flip tricopter folder. You're gonna unzip that, come over to the multi-wee flip underscore try, INO. We're going to open this up and that's going to open up all the uh, config files for the tricopter. So we're going to come into imu.cpp and we're going to scroll down until we see gyro yaw smooth. And I'm going to, my value is set to five right now. That worked well for me, but you can continue going up if you see that your tricopter is still jittering around. And this is just gonna send the signals a little bit slower to the servo so that it doesn't jitter around as much. Anyway, to set this up so you can transmit this information to the board, you're gonna go into tools, find your serial port, which in that case, is that's for me. And your board is the Arduino Due Milanove. It's the at mega three, two, eight. So you're gonna click that and then go ahead and upload. Okay, now that it's done uploading, we now have that new firmware inside of our board. So you can just go ahead and close this out. So instead of having to pause your video and copy down all these numbers and put them in the corresponding slots, I have saved my, all my settings for my tricopter and put them in a file which you can go download. A link is in the description. And all you have to do is go to load, find the file, it's on my desktop, and select it hit open and now all your settings are loaded into your program so you don't have to really set up anything now of course you can change these if something's not working for you but once you have your tricopter set up like we did before all you have to do is put these PID settings in and then you're ready to fly. So even though your controller board has Expo and dual rates already built in, it's a good idea to put some in your radio as well, since the board is designed to kind of flip a multi-copter. So you can see my rudder has nothing because I want it to move at its full speed. Plus there's no Expo on it either so that uh, what you put in is what you get out. And then your aileron and elevator, I put 50-50. So 50% 50 Expo and 50% dual rates. And even with the 30% uh, Expo, in the controller board this is going to make it so that you can fly it around and then still be able to have a lot of authority when you're moving the sticks so be sure to set up your radio like that of course you might not have the 9xr but uh, go into your expo and dual rate settings and change those and if you see that your tricopter is too sensitive you can always lower these numbers to give it a little bit less authority also once you have this all programmed and configured with the settings that i gave you make sure that you calibrate your accelerometers so that whatever the settings you're at right now are zero so get your tricopter as level as you possibly can on the most level surface and then hit the calibrate accelerometer button and that'll calibrate your accelerometers and now your board is completely programmed. Now that everything's programmed, we can attach the props and I'm just using a crescent wrench here to tighten down the nuts for the motor shafts and you wanna get it as tight as you can. Now I'm using the Velcro straps that were inside of the kit to secure the battery in place before we go to fly. I'm using the remaining zip ties to tidy up the wires so that they don't get in the way of anything while flying. And I'll use a Phillips driver to attach the top plate onto the standoffs. And your tricopter is finished. And now you're ready to fly. So in the next episode, we'll take to the skies as I show you what to do and what not to do when flying your tricopter. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.